On your mark. Get ready. It's time to go the distance for sports news and sports review. Get ready. It's the pitch. Okay, hello everyone. This is the pitch. We have a different episode today. Normally, we're covering, you know, we're covering the Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics, Bruins, all the four major Boston men's sports. We have a special episode today. Fox isn't here. I'm going to be your host. We are lucky enough to be here with two professional hockey players, Melissa Bazzari and Nicole Giacchino. Giannino. Giannino. <laughs> Gino is your nickname, right? Yes. All right, so that makes sense. Um, so first off, um, now usually we're talking about, um, you know, we want to talk about J.D. Martinez. We want to talk about the Rick Nash trade, um, Patrice Bergeron just getting hurt. Now, our normal episode with Fox and Paps are going to be next week, so be ready to look for that around March 7th, March 9th. Um, but like I said, we're lucky to be with the Boston Blades today. So first, Nicole, I want you to tell me just something about yourself, where you're from, how long have you been playing professional hockey or even starting hockey? So um, my name is Nicole. I'm from Long Island, New York. So um, actually, fun fact, my dad bet me $50 to play hockey to go on the floor. So I did it, and that's how it all started. So I've been playing since I've been 11 years old. Fun. So that was a, when was the bet? When you were 11? 11, yep. 11. So that, I guess that bet worked out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Got me um, where I am Did today. you ever get the money back from him? or? Yes, I made sure I got that okay, money. Okay, <laughs> good. So that's good. And uh, Melissa? Just tell me a little bit about yourself, where are you from, and how long have you been playing for the Blades, and how long have you been playing in hockey in general? Um, yeah, I'm from Stowe, Vermont. Uh, I've been playing for the Blades for two years. Uh, started with figure skating, actually, cool. at around <laughs> six years old in the little Learn to Skate group. Uh, turns out gracefulness is not my thing, and I asked my parents if I could play hockey. My dad said, those parents have to wake up early, but he mm -hmm. let me anyway, so So, yeah, for the parents, shout out to the parents, because they have to really, like, all the early hours, all the practices. You guys actually have practice today, correct? Yes. So you're going right from here, from your actual job to this to this set, and then going right to practice right after that. So yeah, long hours for hockey, um, but obviously it worked out for you guys. Um, Nicole, what age did you first think that you were actually going to go pro in hockey? Did you ever did this ever cross your mind at all? Like after that that bet with your dad, um, did you ever say, all right, maybe I am pretty good at this? Um, honestly, it never really crossed my mind. I went to college in uh, Holy Cross, so out in Worcester, and the Blades were just a talk around our school because it mm -hmm. is so close to Boston. So with all the Olympians being on that team, I really didn't think it was a possibility for me. So I was actually really surprised when I did get a phone call uh, three years ago to play for the Blades. So um, it was a good good surprise. Cool, cool. Now we're just gonna we're gonna talk about the Olympics soon, obviously. Big, big news. Congratulations to the U.S. Olympic team for winning gold. Um, and now the Boston Blades are a CWHL team, so it's a Canadian um, league, but they're the one team in the U.S. Um, so back to Melissa, what, when did you think you could first go pro, or when did you realize, okay, maybe I'm pretty good at hockey? Um, actually, I had a few teammates who went pro after college, and I thought I wanted to coach, so I worked um, for the University of Vermont for my first year out. Mm -hmm. Realized coaching wasn't for me, and I actually had a few teammates who uh, played with Gino's first year, uh, Christina Brown, one of our other captains, sort of convinced me to play and said, you can do this, and this is something you should definitely pursue. And it's been great because I've got to reconnect with five or six of my teammates from Boston College as well. Awesome, awesome. So now I've been doing some color commentary for the Boston Blades, and the two games I went there, they actually played really well. Um, you guys lost in a shootout to uh, Montreal and actually beat Toronto. So the first time I thought there, I was like, all right, this team's really good, really good offensively, and the def defense was doing pretty well. And Lauren Dom, your goalie, had a really good game against Toronto. How would you guys, uh, I'll start with Nicole first, how would you guys summarize the season so far? Um, I would say this season is way more successful than the past seasons that we've had. So we definitely try and see this as a transition year. Mm -hmm. um, we're just really working on growing on and off the rink um, and just rebuilding our team. So our record definitely doesn't reflect the heart and talent that we have on this team, but I think it will just keep going up from here. And Melissa, back to you for the same question. So how do you, how do, how do you think the season's gone so far? I know you guys almost you got 3-0 lead last game. Mm. Uh, tell <laughs> me a little bit about that game. Um, yeah, I mean, it was exciting for us to, to get a 3-0 lead. Uh, 
something that we haven't been able to do in the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, obviously not the outcome we wanted with that tough third period, but I think Gino said it pretty well that, you know, our record doesn't reflect the progress that we've made this year. Exactly. And games that we were getting blown out last year, we're taking those same teams to overtime, to shootouts, um, really making it down to the wire. So hopefully we're just going to keep going up from there. Awesome. Well, that brings me up to my next question. How are you going to take this experience? And I know it's been a down year for you guys. How are you going to grow as a team and bring it to next year? Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, putting more pucks in the net is something we're always focusing on. Like you mentioned Dom earlier, she's been a, a solid uh, goaltender for us all mm -hmm. year. And I think our coaching staff is, is new and as well as our administration. So everyone is really just trying to build off and build relationships together so we can keep being more successful. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to come to Melissa for this one. Um, what's, so I know you guys have a couple uh, now professional hockey, you guys have a couple other jobs. So just describe your normal day, within, whether it's jobs, schooling, uh, anything you're gonna do. And also like, when do you guys practice? What do you, what's your weekends like usually? Um, yeah, so it's definitely a busy schedule. Um, like you mentioned earlier, we both came from work to here and mm -hmm. then we're going off to practice tonight. Um, that's kind of the tune of our schedule most of the time. Um, it's a lot of planning and prepping. Everyone's gotten really good at meal prep. We talk about it yeah. a lot in the locker room. <laughs> um, you know, I think for me personally, I found playing hockey and working at the same time um, something that sort of made me more driven in the office mm -hmm. and, and in my personal life, just trying to make sure I'm organized and focused and um, able to do the things that I need to do. Uh, weekends, you know, in the season, we're really focused on games. We do get a few off weekends that people take advantage of seeing their friends and family, but we honestly hang out with ourselves even on yeah. off weekends. Um, it's just more time together, and uh, does I don't think it affects us too much. So that's probably pretty good that you have not only the Blades, but the Blades probably takes you away from your work, and then your work probably takes you away from the all out, like hockey and all the grind. So like, um, to put it into perspective, other hockey teams, I mean, they're just hockey, hockey, hockey. So it's probably good to have that balance, you know what I mean? And um, come from different, you know, parts of your day and make it a little bit easier. Um, this is big, big news. So like we just said, uh, the US uh, women's hockey team just took home gold, um, knocking out Canada. Now this is big for the USA. And one thing we're trying to do is grow the sport of hockey, grow a little bit more um, women's interest in the sport of hockey. Melissa, what do you think this, the whole fact that they won the gold, how is that going to give a little bit more exposure to the U.S., and how is it going to grow the brand of hockey? Um, yeah, I mean, I think any time a sport is on the international stage, it uh, draws great attention to the growth that the sport has made. Um, the league bringing in China this year really, you know, draws to the Olympics for when they're hosting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was awesome. Our team, you know, everyone was tired of practice because we stayed up to watch the Olympics, watch the U.S. win. Right. Um, I just think bringing more attention to the sport and seeing the talent level and how much it's increased over the last couple of years is just what's going to bring uh, more people to fall in love with women's hockey. Exactly. I, I mean, I was to the edge of my seat. I didn't watch, other than the Blades, I, I didn't watch too much um, women's hockey until the Olympics. And I was on the edge of my seat and it was a really, really exciting um, win and good for the, the country of the United States and to grow the brand. It's huge. Um, so what I want to start talking about is now... As soon as you, so you always were talking about how, you know, when you were 11, you wanted to be um, maybe a pro hockey player. What was it like getting your first paycheck? I'll start with you, Melissa. What was it like getting your first pay paycheck to play hockey and actually, okay, cool, this is playing a sport. I'm getting money to play a sport. What was that like? Um, I mean, it was amazing. I think I joke around saying that my five-year-old self uh, wanted to play in the NHL, but you know, the fact that there is an NHL for us and a league that we can play in and grow the sport and be professional is something to be really proud of. Awesome. And that's back to you, Nicole. What was it like getting your first paycheck? And how do you think this potentially influences the sport move going, going forward um, with, with the money scale and everything for women's hockey? Um, I definitely think it was an indescribable moment for me. It just made all the years of the effort that we put in worth it. So um, it just felt great to be an ambassador for the sport and for the CWHL to give us that opportunity and give girls with a future an opportunity. Awesome. So like we were just talking about, the U.S. wins the gold. Um, what are some ways, Melissa, do you think that we can promote the sport of hockey in the U.S., especially for the women? Because, um, you know, early in the schools, I, I feel like it's a lot, it's addressed to, to boys, oh, we got to get hockey out there, get hockey out there. But, you know, there's a lot of talented women out there. 
try to get uh, hockey a little bit more notoriety. What do you think schools should be doing to promote hockey, especially with women? Um, I think, like Gino said, we are ambassadors of the sport and having um, ourselves and other hockey players like us going to schools, talking to kids about the opportunities hockey can present to them, uh, I think would go a long way. I know when I grew up, I played boys hockey because there were no girls who played. Um, so, you know, for me, if someone who was playing professional, a girl at that point in my life would have been really influential. And I mm -hmm. think that, that just getting the word out there is the way we grow the game. Now, back to you, Gino. What do you think... You know, how can we promote hockey um, with women and especially what, sh what should schools be doing to uh, maybe address that, maybe get a little bit more fan interest, a little bit more kids involved in the game young? Well, I think Melissa pretty much answered it, but I just wanted to add, um, I think it would be great for us to maybe attend more youth games. You know, it shows a lot. Um, I know the other day I went into the Winthrop High School girls locker room after I watched one of their games and just kind of briefly talked to them, said, you know, like you have all the opportunities in front of you are like I see so much talent in here so whether it's D1, D3, whatever you want you can pursue that and mm -hmm. you can achieve it one day so I think just going in there and answering their questions and having someone to like physically look up to um, just goes a long way. And I just want to bring up so you guys do play at Mike Arruzzioni rink mm -hmm. in Winthrop. Now one thing I noticed when I went there it's incredibly cold like I was standing <laughs> there and like I had to have like eight layers of coats on and um, so that's the one thing that they definitely need first is heat. That's the big, <laughs> that's the big thing. Um, and Melissa, you were talking about how like you were had to play with the boys growing up. Um, what what age range would you say this was? And were you did you realize that you were like okay, I'm better than some of the boys here? And um, what talk about that going forward in elementary school? Um, yeah, I actually I played boys hockey from when I started up until uh, I went to high school, mm -hmm. and I. Um, was fortunate enough to go to play in a, a club high school girls team. But yeah, I played boys the whole time and I guess I never really viewed myself as better or worse than the boys. I just kind of was part of the team. And, right, exactly. You know, they welcomed me the same as any other player in the locker room. Awesome. And back to you, Nicole. Um, did you ever have to play on a boys roster and what age was that? And um, was there ever a team that was all girls for you in the lower age in like elementary school? Um, well, since I started when I was 11, I just grew up, like, grew up playing with the boys. There wasn't that much opportunity on Long Island. Um, there was only two girls teams, actually, so it was a lot of back and forth, um, small rosters. So um, my dad actually pulled me aside and was like, if you want to continue playing this sport, like, you're going to have to go somewhere. So I did make the decision at 15 years old to leave my family, go to Lake Placid, New York, and wow. attend National Sports Academy, which I went to until I went to college. So... Um, yeah, it was definitely hard knowing that to like pursue something that you love, you needed to leave your family and make that difficult decision when you were so young. So it was just cool. Awesome. And so obviously you made the right decision. Um, now you guys did a lot of traveling. I know there's even some Chinese, Chinese teams in the CWHL, which is really cool. Um, Melissa, you want to start with that? What was, what was it like traveling to China and what was, what's it like experiencing all that different cultures and, um, what, what's the hockey vibe over there in China and in, in Asia? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I can speak for a lot of my teammates and say the China trip was amazing for us. Um, it was a great opportunity for us to bond, get to go somewhere different and experience a totally different cu culture from language to food to just customs. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, playing over there, the facilities were incredible. I know that's kind of a strange thing, but it really surprised me. Um, the fans there, there was probably a thousand people and it was just incredible to see that kind of support for the sport when it's on the other side of the world. Wow. Was it like, was it tough adjusting over there when you were in China or do you guys have like directions of where to go and? Um, we actually had a translator who came with us. Her name was Emily. She was amazing. Uh, she definitely pointed us in the right direction for, for food and, and helped us even navigate through Hong Kong by ourselves for the day. So having that helped us out a lot. Wow. And back to you, Nicole, what was your experience like in China? Um, I just think to sum it all up, like it just is incredible to travel the world and play the sport you love. Like, I feel like we are so lucky for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the CWHL did a great job of spacing out the trip. So we actually had days where we could travel, experience the culture of food, like mm -hmm. Melissa said. So um, it was just awesome to go into Hong Kong, go into Shenzhen and just experience the culture and see a different aspect of life. Awesome. Now, the Blades, like we were talking about this year, 
um, all that experience, all that growth. Melissa, where do you see this Blades uh, franchise going in the, within the next five years or so? Um, yeah, I mean, I think we keep building off of the success that we've had, uh, you know, growing the team, growing our, our fan base in Boston. Boston's a hockey town, and being able to draw more attention to women's hockey here in mm -hmm. Boston is something I see happening for us. Um, for the league in general, I think getting more uh, teams involved internationally. You know, we saw at the Olympics how great the sport can be shown around the world, and mm -hmm. we experienced it ourselves in China. And so just to continue um, bringing attention to hockey and, and what it can provide for the world. Yeah, so Boston Hockey Town, um, and again, like we, we would be talking, you know, usually we're talking about Boston Bruins. Everyone knows in Boston how exciting the Bruins are, and, but we got to get a little bit more notoriety here for the Blades because um, they're an exciting, exciting up-and-coming team right now, and it's important to go out there and go to Mike Arruzzioni rink and um, show some support. Um, Melissa, what was your favorite moment so far in the season or in your career in general? Um, I think it would have to be uh, getting those paychecks. You know, it's not not about the money by any means, but you know, Gino mentioned earlier, getting paid to do something you love and something where when I was a kid, I shot pucks into a snowbank, and mm -hmm. to think that that eventually led to something that could be even greater for the kids who are shooting pucks into a snowbank now is cool. pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna we're gonna end the show by just saying, um, uh, M Melissa. Thank you guys so much again. Thank you for coming onto the show. Where can these fans come to see you play next, and when's your next game? Yeah, so we'll be in Winthrop um, at the Mike Ruzzioni Rink on March 10th and 11th, uh, 8 p.m. on the 11th, or sorry, on the 10th, and then 2.30 p.m. on Sunday the 11th. Hope to see you there. Awesome. And you could follow Boston CWHL on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as MySpace, which I don't know if people are still using MySpace, but you could Put do that. Put us in your top eight. Yep. Um, yeah. And also you can follow the pitch on Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, Venmo, anything you want to give us money would be great. Um, and again, we're going to have the normal show coming up next next week with Fox and Peps. We're going to, we still haven't even talked about the Super Bowl yet. We haven't talked about the Patriots loss. Uh, we have a lot of Boston news. We have a, Gronkowski might be retiring. He's only 28 and might be retiring soon. Um, J.D. Martinez, huge, huge signing for the Red Sox. And also, spring training um, is, is here. And what, what do you think the outlook of the Red Sox looks? So thank you guys again for coming onto the show. And as always, you're watching The Pitch. Tune in next week. Thank you.